Hey, it's ACAP. We're going to learn how to make an Apple loop in Logic Pro 10. First thing that you should do is bring in an audio file that's kind of rhythmic and percussive. This is going to be the easiest to work with when you're going to make a loop because it has strong transients and that'll help for when we're quantizing. So this is a snare drum player. It's actually a great LA musician, MB Gordy. Uh, and don't be deceived by the simplicity of this passage. He's actually a beast and can play pretty much anything. So let's take a listen. Pay attention to the meter and the length, how many measures this is. Okay, so this is in 4-4. Four, four. And I don't have to change anything up to ready in four four. And the it's about four bars, and there's a little bit of extra stuff at the end. We're gonna get rid of that so that we have a whole number of bars that's important for it to be a loop. So use the marquee tool to cut off at the first transient. I'm using the click zones. You can also use the command tool or whatever you you can even change the tool right here and press TR to quickly change, but use the marquee tool, click right before the first transient and use the arrow keys to navigate by transients. Once you've found the first one, press semicolon and get rid of anything that lies before. Let's go to the end. I know that this is the ending of the file. Let's get rid of the rest. It really helps that this this note is on a downbeat so that I can make sure that this whole audio region is exactly four bars long. So make sure it begins on a downbeat here. And we have a four bar phrase, but the tempo is wrong and it doesn't line up. It doesn't match with the session. So the next thing to do is to measure out four bars using this cycle length and go to the edit menu tempo adjust tempo using region length and locators and it will ask you if you want to do this globally or create a tempo change i don't have any other regions in my project so i can do this globally and not affect anything else but if you have other regions that you're working on you may want to just create a new tempo change instead so it doesn't disturb anything else. So now the tempo matches and the region is the same length as the project's four bars here. The tempo found was about 137 beats per minute. Now turn on flex mode with command F that actually turns on flex view and then you can click this button to enable flex. Now open up the audio editor. You can see that it already has drawn in some flex markers for you. Open up the audio editor and press control T to view the transients. Now you can look through this whole file and make sure all the transients are where they need to be. And if you don't want some, it's very easy to delete them. You can just double click and you can see in the range window that it is synchronized and where this transient is deleted, so is this flex marker. So you can also delete some transients by using this minus button, and then you can add some more in the selected region by hitting the plus button until it's gray, and then it can't find any more. So it, depending on how precise you want this to be, you can add more also with the pencil tool. Um, my command click tool is set to the pencil tool and you can just add them like this. I don't really need these grace notes here. Uh, if you want to be extra precise, you can, and then just remember what note value this is for when you quantize it. So all my transients are where they need to be. Uh, and I'm ready to quantize. So I'm just going to use the eighth note, which is my smallest note value. And you can see that some of the notes got adjusted. This is 
after all, a human performance, and even professional musicians sometimes play a little bit ahead of the beat or behind the beat. That's what makes them human after all. So this is our quantized performance. Sometimes because of the nature of the performance, some notes may get quantized in a place that you didn't want them to go. So you can easily just drag these flex markers to another grid line. While we're here, uh, let's just take a look at these different flex slicing modes. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory if you just read the names of them, but slicing is a good one for drum sounds. Something that you might notice happening is this, this weird gap uh, between the beginning of a transient and the rest of the note. Usually it doesn't cause any problems, but if you start noticing some pops and clicks, you can go back to the audio editor and move the transient a little bit sooner. And you'll notice that the beginning of the note is now attached to the rest of the note here. And that should, that should help your playback. So now that it's quantized, uh, it's time to make the quantization permanent. And the way that you do that before you export the loop is you can either bounce this region in place by pressing Control B, or you can make a cut anywhere in the region and then rejoin it. I'm gonna cut using Command T and then rejoin the regions with Command J and it automatically has to create a new audio region when you do that. Now that you have your new region, you can just you either right click on the top bar here and you can export it to the loop library or you just use this shortcut key, Control Shift O. Name it however you want. And these options, if you want to select some of these, you can, but it's going to go to the same place no matter what. And make sure loop is selected. If loop is not automatically selected, your region is probably not exactly an, a whole number of bars. So create the loop. And you can see it in your loop library. I pressed O to get there and you go to my loops. And there it is. I'm going to show you where this file ends up in the finder because you may want to know for the future. So go into your system drive. This is usually called Macintosh HD. I've renamed mine. Now in this main library folder, you can find the default loops that come with logic, but we're going to go to your custom loops folder. You go to users, your username, library, audio, Apple loops, user loops, and they're all here. So this is the one that we made. You can see that logic automatically creates them as an AIF. And of course the file that you bounced earlier, when you bounced this in place or when you made a split and rejoined this file, that's going to be in your project files. So let's say you created this loop and you don't like how it sounds. So you want to get rid of it in the finder. You can delete it here, but then you have to update. You have to re-index the loops here. You can see that it's grayed out, but it doesn't automatically disappear. So this may take a minute, but you just use the drop down menu and hit re-index all loops. So the most important part about this tutorial is that you practice on your own and it's great if you've been following along and I hope you've been able to follow along easily. If not, let me know if anything's unclear and I'll try to clear it up for you. But I really encourage you to, after you've gone through this video with me, to make some loops on your own. Pick some more rhythmic audio files and, and make a whole bunch of loops 
uh, without watching this video so that you can really learn and really know how to do this for yourself. So thanks for taking the time to watch and until next time, stay tuned.